Hello, welcome back. This is Roger Pace. Today we're going to talk about lead. And um, it's I've been shooting since the start of the year. And that's about seven months now. And it's only now that I'm really starting to understand how much lead to give the bird, depending on which position it is. So it's taken me seven months. I've read about lead, I've watched videos about lead, but you've got to go out there and shoot and put a lot of cartridges through your gun before you really start to get a hang of lead. And I reckon two weeks ago, I started to get a true understanding of where I needed to point the shotgun for each target at different angles. There's a lot of videos about lead, and they're not very specific. And in this video, I don't want to be in that same vein. I'm going to try and be specific, but you need to adjust it a little bit depending on how high your gun shoots and your personal shooting style. A lot of videos say you don't need to give it any lead. Just see the bird, point to it, follow through with a smooth swing. But I don't believe that that is true. You can't do the same follow through to a straightaway as you do to a right swinging target or a left swinging target. Left targets, right targets, they need swing. And the follow through won't be enough to give you that lead. In the time since you pull, from the time you pull the trigger till the time that shot gets to where the target is, there's a time lapse of a fraction of a second. But in that fraction of a second, the target has moved. So you've got to give swing and you've, you've got to give lead and you've got to be certain of where to point your shotgun to give it the lead. And since I've been doing that for the last few rounds, my consistency has improved and my second shot has improved. So before we talk about lead, we need to look at the basics again. And the basics that I'm going to mention, I'm not going to go in detail because I've done videos on them and you can look at the videos that I've done before on them. But many targets are missed because of incorrect lead or incorrect elevation, whether we don't go up to the bird enough or we go past it. And so... Make sure, before we talk about lead, make sure your gun fits you. There's a video about gun fit. Make sure that you've got a consistent gun mount. Bring your gun to your cheek, not your cheek to the gun. Do not put your head down onto the stock of the gun. Bring the gun up to your cheek and then move head and gun down. Foot position is, has to be different on every station. There's a video about that. And don't call for the bird until you are ready. Now that sounds very simple, but it happens to me and I'm sure it's happened to you. Sometimes we call for that bird, but we're not really ready, either mentally ready or stable on our feet. We're just not quite ready. So don't call for the bird until you are 100% ready. Otherwise, we're going to miss. The other thing to remember is never move your gun until you see the bird. If you anticipate it's going to go left and you move left, then it goes right, then you're going chung chung. Never move the gun until you see the bird. Focus on the clay. Never look at the barrels. Focus on the clay. Do not hesitate. It's basically call, see bird, shoot. Then that time frame, call, seabird, shoot. Seabird, shoot bird. And so, how much lead do we give each target? I've got a little diagram of what I'm going to show you, and I keep it in my wallet. And I look at it, and sometimes when I'm falling asleep at night, I close my eyes, and I, ha and I see the clay going out, and I can picture it in my mind. So I, I shoot it in my mind. And that is a good thing to do. And so when we're out on the trap, 
the when we're on when we're on station three and we've got that straight away, all we have to do is focus on the leading edge of the target and shoot where the orange bit is, because by the time the shot gear, that's where the clay is going to be. So shoot at the leading edge of the target. Still on station three, when we have that a little bit of a quartering one, we should give it a little bit more lead, just a tiny bit past the leading edge, but still we're giving it lead. On the right-hand swinger from station three, we give it a bit more lead. And so, if we go through the stations, on station one, this one here requires less lead, but the left swinger on station one is going to need more lead. On station five, that one there is going to be a straightaway. Just shoot above the leading edge. But this one from station five, the right-hand swinger from station five, is going to need more lead. Roughly, I would say, about a foot. A foot there and a foot there. And so that's as specific as I can get. Depending on your gun, you need to work out your lead. But that's a very good starting point. The more the angle, the more lead you need to give it. This is just about elevation, up or down. But always at the leading edge. But when they're swinging, further ahead of the leading edge. And the last thing I'm going to say is about lead is you've got to read the wind conditions. If the wind is blowing towards your face, that's going to keep the targets up. So they're going to keep rising steeper. So you might have to give it a tiny bit more lead. If the wind is blowing at your back, that's going to keep the targets lower. So you need to give it a fraction less lead. I hope that that is important. But I think the one statement to come from this is that just pointing the shotgun and following through works on your straightaways, but on your left swingers and right swingers, you do need to give it some swing, some lead. And so I hope that was useful, but you definitely can't go out there at every station on every target and give it and just shoot at the leading edge or just shoot at the target. It won't give you the high scores you want. You've got to start thinking about lead. And, and just remember that the more the angle sideways from you, the more lead you need to give it. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy shooting.